What's going on guys, Josh Pocock here, and on this channel, we've covered many different AI pair programmers, especially V0. We've covered that many different times. We covered V0 alternatives. We recently covered lovable.dev, which is kind of similar to V0, as well as bolt.new, which everyone has been talking about, which is kind of like V0, but it gives you more of a full end-to-end -end, uh, capability, such as creating Next.js apps, Remix apps, whatever the case may be. And for those of you who know about bolt.new, you will know that it is attached to stack blitz and when you actually go ahead and create an app you can deploy it directly to netlify which is a direct competitor to vercel which is the honor of v0 and previously v0 was really just for front end uis you know screenshot a dashboard upload it to v0 it'll create you the you know interface for that give you the code but now with some of their recent updates it actually allows you to do next js apps or or react applications or create multi files in one generation and deploy it directly to Vercel. There's a bunch of new updates that we're going to go over in this video. V0 has really been stepping up their game and I'm excited to show you guys if you haven't seen it already. Let's dive right into it. <clears throat> All right, guys, so we're going to dive into it and actually show you exactly um, some of the stuff here. But just to quickly go over what Vercel and V0 posted on Twitter about some of their updates here. So what's new with V0, support for Next.js 15, Python, and more improvements. Python, Node.js support, image to code generation improvements, support for Next 15, new premium features including disable search engine indexing for published blocks, faster code editing, chat history, browsing, and file attachments. We also got access to environment variables, means that V0 can securely connect to databases, APIs, and external services. So the way that works is he's going up here, clicking on view project, which we'll show in just a second. Uh, add environment variables within that project, create a database. Now he's saying you have access to an environment variables for a blog store, send emails on that submission. All right, and we can see that the email was sent. Okay, V0 blocks can now be deployed to Vercel with custom uh, subdomains. As you can see here, you can set a custom domain and then deploy it. So you can link and deploy to Vercel projects and use Vercel project environment variables. Okay, so Vercel specifically. This is really cool as well. For those of you who saw my video on lovable.dev, um, you would have saw how you can kind of use like an inspect element to select the front end um, generation of the, the code generator, like, you know, the interface and then say, okay, change this button around or do this or do that. Well, now you can do something similar right here so you can click on well it's exactly the same you can click on the whatever um, you're seeing here in the ui and say hey can you reduce the search font right here and it's actually going to modify that so that's a really nice feature uh i'm assuming bull.new will probably add something like that soon since all the apps are adding it now bull.new is making some cool updates too but now v0 is definitely at least catching up in terms of the end-to-end -end space where they're able to now generate next.js apps and whatnot all right so let's actually dive into the new and improved v0 so go to v0.dev like i said all links will be covered in the description um, down below just like always including the twitter links as well now you'll see it looks a little bit different than the actual legacy version which if we go over here, you can actually see legacy v0. So this is what the legacy version looked like. Um, as you can see here, it's a bit different. One thing I'm curious if they still have is this explore tab right here where you can see new generations and feature generations. This is something that lovable.dev had as well. Um, and I don't know if the new v0 still has this or not. I didn't actually never even, to be honest, even saw this on the old v0. I'm just seeing this now. So that's kind of cool, to be honest, where you can actually go ahead, click on. And okay, so you can't see it anymore. It looks like just because of uh, this is the legacy version, I think. But anyways, let's go back to the new one. So a few new things. One, we have your library over here. Two, we have the project. So this is where you can create a project. So within the project, you could add like an icon here. You could add a name right here, so like Next.js CRM. Here you could add a description. This is optional, so you can describe what the project is going to be used for. And then here under context, this is optional, so this is where you can give uh, more context. So guidelines or instructions the model will use to generate better responses to prompt. So this is actually very useful, something that you can do. Projects kind of like similar to how you have projects in Claude. Um, this is always something that I found to be very useful, where you can give more context and get better higher quality 
generation prompt. So I would suggest actually using this and putting some actual valuable information in here when you're building a project. I'm personally not going to do that right now just for testing purposes, but this is really cool. The one thing that I'm seeing is still kind of missing, which I kind of like with bolt.new is if I go to bolt.new here and go like this next JS CRM for content management. And then I just click on this little star icon here. It actually enhances a prompt. So I could just copy this prompt right here, go back to uh, V0 and we could actually use this prompt here. So I'm just going to create the project first. And once you create the project, you'll see that you have a place where you can ask a question in the Next.js project or the Next.js CRM project we have. Here you can add instructions, right? This is similar to like what you can add in Claude. Here you can add sources. You click on add sources. You could actually add files, attachments, etc. Give it context and build a little knowledge base. So this is very valuable. This is something that you currently cannot do with the uh, know bolt.new so this is actually very unique here we have the vercel connection so linking your project to a vercel project will enable deployments to vercel from v0 so this is really cool as well so you can click on here to view in vercel all right here is our vercel project right here so you could do stuff here of course in your vercel and then have that directly integrated with v0 which is nice and then here you can add environment variables um, to s store sensitive information like API keys, credentials, etc. So if you click on that, it's actually going to take you to the Vercel side of things. So you actually have to add these environment variables in the Vercel project. So if you plan on deploying to Vercel, then this is extremely useful and can streamline your process tremendously. Now let's go ahead and paste in that prompt here. You could also add attachments, right? So if we wanted to take a screenshot of a um, CRM that we want to replicate, we could do so. Just as an example here, I will take a screenshot of this, like so, this dashboard, and we can actually upload that to V0. Okay, so we got our prompt right here, create a modern Next.js uh, CRM system for managing contacts with the following features, contact list, search and filtering, contact details, editable fields, contact categories, tags for organization, basic CRUD operations for contacts, responsive design with clean UI, form validation and error handling, data persistence using a database, Authentication and user management dashboard with key metrics. Please include best practices, TypeScript, and Tailwind's CSS for styling. So we'll see how this does. Um, if anything, I would maybe make it a little bit more basic just for this you know, video, but let's go ahead and just run it. Okay, so now you can see we are generating multiple different files and folders right here. So generating types, generated Prisma schema, generated app dashboard page.tsx, Generating components, forward slash contacts, forward slash contact lists. Okay, so it's generating an ID folder right here and then a page in here for different contacts. As you can see here, this is like we can actually see the folder structure on the right, uh, right hand side here. Before it used to just be code with V0. As you can see, it's like an actual project right here, which is really nice, similar to like bolt.new. Something went wrong, please edit, retry, or delete your message. I said, what went wrong? Can you fix? There was no actual error. I made a mistake in interpreting this, uh, the situation. Let me provide a proper response to your original request. Okay, so I just restarted. I don't know why that happened. Whatever. Okay, so it is generated now. Looks like we're getting an error. So we can see the file lib forward slash auth cannot be found. Make sure the file exists. I'm just going to go ahead and click fix with v0. Okay, so it's adding the file. Importing next auth. So of course you could specify the um, you know the type of stack you're using. Kind of cool though. We're using NextAuth here um, and Prisma. I'm assuming you could say something like use Drizzle or use you know whatever the case is for an ORM. Okay, so it created the lib.auth file, um, created NextAuth configuration, updated the import statements, added a login page to handle user auth. Make sure to set your environment variables, particularly NextAuth secret for NextAuth to work correctly. Also ensure that you have the necessary dependencies installed for NextAuth and Prisma adapter and bcrypt. Okay, so here it said preview is disabled because um, v0 does not support previewing node.js APIs. So I said, hey, can we fix this? And now it's removing the server side auth right here, removing API routes, uh, using client side state management instead of server side data fetching and removing Prisma and database interactions. But of course, if you deployed or just went 
brought the code over to Vercel. Are you tired of pouring thousands of dollars into appointment setters only to watch leads slip away? Imagine having a team of elite sales agents booking qualified appointments for you around the clock. No more wasted time on training, no more frustration with performance, and no more draining your budget on inconsistent and expensive call centers. Introducing Stride Agents. AI-powered appointment setters that work 24-7, never get tired, and book appointments while you sleep. Trained on thousands of successful conversations, our AI agents outperform human teams at just one-tenth of the cost. Join the ranks of businesses that doubled their appointments and booking rates in just a matter of weeks. Don't get left behind in the AI revolution. Visit strideagents.com now and transform your entire sales process with cutting-edge AI technology. It's time to accelerate your stride with AI agents. You could probably make use of it, but I just want to preview it within... Um, zero here okay i'm just going to deploy just for simplicity right here so now we're building our preview okay so i told it just to remove all the node.js stuff and now it did so we can see that um here is our code you see next.js crm right here we can see our different contacts right here we can go back to list right see the tags company phone email add a contact new contact there should be a contact form that pops up i could tell it to add that now, a few cool things is we can go here to select we could click on you know this button right here okay so i'm saying have a form that pops up to fill in info uh to add new contact we're going to go on that you could open this in a new tab of course so if we do that we can see that here now a few things i noticed right here that you know it's not as like stack blitz is like actually like uh, almost like an actual IDE within the, um, you know, it's like a web container. So you can edit the code here. You can, um, you can even see the terminal, which I like about bolt.new is like, you can see the terminal down here for stack blitz and an actual terminal. That's something that V0 does not have as of now. Okay. It looks like we got an error. I'm going to say fix with V0. Click go. Okay. So now if we click on add new contact, we can see that we can add new stuff right here. Okay, this needs to be an email, so let's do this. Okay, now it added it. Okay, I just added another one. Here we go. Now, ideally, once you add the contact, I would make that form disappear. Of course, you could optimize this and improve it more. I really like this select function here. Now, you can add to code base similar to like how you always could. You can just simply run this command. And then you could fork this chat right here, which is useful. Forking is something I don't believe you can do with uh, bull.new. So yeah, here's an example of bolt.new right here. It doesn't look like you can fork from what I can see. One thing I like though is that you can actually download the code, which is really useful. Um, as well as like I mentioned, you have the bolt terminal here, terminal here as well. Uh, it gives you more freedom to kind of see what's going on behind the scenes and you can actually run commands. As you can see, this is like actually like an, more of an IDE and you can actually run almost like a full app within bull.new just from reading the twitter updates that's almost what i thought you know v0 had so i'm kind of disappointed they don't have you know those features as of now it's still i would still say this is still more of a front end developing tool um with a little bit more flexibility now that you can do like multi-file uh generations and have like the folder structure here um, with multiple components and this sort of thing so this does make it definitely better than what it was and i think it still does have its strengths compared to uh, certain tools maybe like bolt.new or whatever the case may be when it comes to generating front-end ui that you can just use right out of box but as of now i would still say they have a, a ways to go just to get like the end-to-end -end side of things if that's what they're trying to go for i do like how you can closely deploy it to vercel have the environment variables and i really do like these new pro this new projects feature this is definitely very useful to giving contacts and building like a knowledge base for your specific projects so all in all just to summarize what the new features are we got the projects we got the selector feature where you can select an element and tell it to iterate upon it and then we have the multi-file editing with different folders etc um, those are just some of the main new features and new thing capabilities that i'm seeing that are valuable to v0 just wanted to give you guys an update all in all they're definitely a lot more powerful features than the old v0 i still think that they could improve upon certain areas um, to maybe get if they want to get more similar to like bolt.new um, but also i think they have some uh, advantages to bolt.new and other things as well so each one of these tools has their pros and cons but let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below about these new v0 updates and let me know what is 
your specific favorite AI pair programmer for specific things? Do you like B0 for front end stuff, cursor for more, you know, complex advanced stuff, maybe windsurf? Do you like bull.new for just kind of simple stuff to get prototype really quickly? Let me know what your thoughts are down below, guys. Also, if you're new to this channel, we upload videos about AI, marketing, sales, business growth, etc. So if you like that type of content, you got some value here, make sure to like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to stay up to date with the uploads. Also too, guys, if you haven't already joined our free community, stridecommunity.com, I'll leave a link down below for our free Facebook group and Discord channel. And then also too, guys, I just made a new free community, the Stride AI community. I'm going to leave a link down below as well. I would definitely recommend joining this. I'm going to be making a lot of free content, free resources, a full-on uh, resource vault for AI, AI uh, marketing stuff, coding stuff, whatever the case is, is going to be in this community for free. So definitely check it out. You can network with myself as well as other like-minded individuals. And then also too, guys, if you run a business and you need help with sales, marketing, implementing systems, AI, AI agents, AI cool callers, AI call center into your business, then book a call down below at executivestride.com forward slash apply and we can see if it's a fit. Other than that, guys, I will see you in the next video. Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.